Because David was born out of wedlock. The mother and the father didn't properly marry. In the Jewish tradition, such a child don't have any inheritance in the family. David's position in the family to didn't help him. He was the least among his stepbrothers. And David, personality, though he was good looking, but his good looking wasn't his focus. Please hear me very well. There are people who sometimes, who's good looking, whose beauty deceives them. Sometimes certain achievement in your life can be the cause of your deterioration. In most times, you see that people who are from a very good home, their children, in most cases, don't do very well. Because at times, their background becomes their hindrance. Complacency sometimes set in. So David was a man who had a very good looking. All these three points didn't attract the attention of God. What attracted the attention of God is the heart of David. His personality, his parental background, his, how do you call it? His personality, parental background, his position in the family, this three things didn't attract God's attention. What attracted God's attention is the priority of David, his heart. When Samuel entered the house of Jesse, looking for a king, Jesse has even forgotten that there is a son called David who was taking care of the sheep. So Jesse tried to anoint Eliab who looked like a king because Saul himself was a giant. God said, that is not it. He comes the second, that is not it. So the children were positioned according to their birth. First one, God is not. Second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, sixth one, seventh one. God, God said, no, no, no. But J David, Samuel was still hearing in his spirit that God said, there is a king in this house. So Samuel asked, is that all your children? The father said, there is one to him. If you put the, put the crown on his head, it wouldn't fit him. He, oh, oh, baby. And those days, so it was the lowest form of job. The menial job that nobody would like to do. The shepherd in those days were not respected. So Samuel said, go and bring him, I will not sit down. The heart of David, his priority, he was taking care of the sheep. He was diligent in what the Lord has entrusted into his hand. Listen to me. Man look at the outward, but God looks at the heart. Man looks at the outward, but God looks at the heart. If you look at all the people that God called, you look at their heart. The calling of Moses, let me turn aside and see how the, why the bush was burn, uh, burning but not being consumed. And when God saw the heart, God called him. The calling of Joseph, Joseph was one person who was reporting the evil of his brothers to the father. So though divine factors set in, God looks at the heart. Hallelujah. Amen. I always use Pastor Felix New Wine Temple as an example. We wanted to start a church at uh, uh, Adi Sadel. We were battling with it. I gave that assignment to one pastor. For almost three years, he couldn't find a meeting place. Pastor Felix having preached before. I was just in my prayer room. Then I called him, Pastor Felix. By then, the brother Felix, called sir. Can you just go to Pedro around and look for a meeting place? In the morning, by 9 o'clock, he came to the pastor. I found a place. I said, ah, somebody looking for a meeting place for three years. And you just this morning, you got a place. My brother, remove the mask. If you are the pastor, who will you, whom will you send there? Somebody for three years couldn't get a place. And somebody for just like that, three hours found a place. Whom will you send there? It's not because he's an away. I don't play away game. Within three hours, he located a place. God always looks at the heart. How diligent you are. 
He doesn't look at how eloquent you are. He doesn't look at, if it comes to the point of being eloquent, I am not qualified to be called. No, 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 no. Mini Mikasa. Misradi. Mika Inji, Misradi. I am not bold. I joined ICGs within the interval of season. I said, you have to go to Bible school. But I remember asked, Are you a pa- have you been trained? I said, no. Because we came with some kind of raw zeal. The zeal of the Lord consumed our hearts. That we were working for God without thinking of reward. I remember very when I finished Bible school, the Dr. Otabe called me. We want to post you. Swedu wants you, Pristia wants you. Where do you want to go? I said, left to me is Agona Konyako that is on my heart. But wherever you want to send me, I am ready to go. While some of my friends were fighting, want to be in Accra, Agona Konyako was my prayer topic. We were having all kinds of programs there, bringing people to church and all kinds of things. Hallelujah. So Doc said, okay, I will post you. I said, Doc, I was trained as a teacher. And at GES, you are posted to where your service is highly needed. I said, okay, I'll send you to PC. I said, that is good. Before then, I was in the Bible school in Accra, pastoring a church at Pristia. You close from lectures on Friday, you are on your way to Pristia. You get there sometimes to do all night, following the Saturday, do evangelism, then Sunday, have service, after service, do follow up, then you are in the car back to Accra for lectures early morning Monday. There were many times I have to sleep at that Prairie station. Many times at the mercy of the weather. Many, many times. Married with family, got to Priscilla, there was no accommodation. Had to be sleeping in somebody's sitting room. Ministry, somebody's sitting room. Sometime, when we see the generation today, you ask, what is wrong with our generation? When they were doing this work here, those of you who saw it, the way people were carrying concrete, what I'm saying, the people are still alive. People like Professor Sam Amwa and other, and then they were all carrying concrete for the building of the house of God. For the building of the house of God. Hallelujah. Sometimes you look at people's harvest without looking at the seed they sow. And it's always good for you to know how things move. God will do it, but he's looking at your heart. God is looking at your heart. David's heart attracted God. And what his biological father could not give him, what his position in the family could not give him, what his appearance could not give him, when Samuel came in, naturally his parental background was against him. His position in the family didn't favor him. Even though his personality was good looking, he was not qualified to be a king. So everything in the natural was against David. Anything can be against you, but nothing can be against your heart. Amen? Amen? We may not give you the chance in this church, but your heart. Your heart. God looks at the heart. So when Samuel came in, another chapter was introduced in the life of David, which was the divine order. The way man was looking at things from the natural, God was also looking at things from a different angle. So the divine order was introduced, God's perspective. 
Divine order supersedes every, every tradition. It supersedes every philosophy. It supersedes every nothing that is the natural. God himself said, in Sodom, I have seen the heart of this guy. He is the one I'm choosing as a king. And when David started, look at people that came to David. Second Samuel, chapter 23. Second Samuel chapter 22, the verse 1 and 2. Second Samuel 22, the verse 1 and 2. Then David spoke to the Lord the words of this psalm. And the day when the Lord had delivered him from the hands of his enemies and from the hand of Saul. Pardon me. First Samuel chapter 22, the verse 1 and 2. First Samuel. And everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt, everyone who was discontented gathered to him. So he became captain over them. And there were about 400 men with him. David was running away from King Saul. Anointing of David attracted all kinds of attention. So Saul was chasing David to kill him. So David had to go and hide himself. And his ministry attracted three groups of people, the nobodies. People who were distressed. People who were not sure of their future. Please go back to the verse 2. People who were distressed. It means they were in a state of anxiety. They were sorrowful. They were in pain. So you ask, what do I do with these people? There were people that David could not welcome. If you look at it from the natural. Distressed people. Then the second group that he attracted, people who were in debt, they were owing. So they came to seek refuge with David. The third group, people who were discontented with what? With the existing rule. People who were grieved, who were bitter in their heart. Distress, in debt, discontented. These were the people he attracted. Hey, Udi Bayede. Say, I will pay na nyamia fro. Si kona kodi sofo, ube si a sorry dying. Ke si in the world. Ne unkro fo, muba wunche. First group, a wunye, omu amudi ayroho. Second group, omu amudi kao. Third group, omu amu no nini daso. Ene bay, adi bayede. You are going to start something big. And these are the seed you got. But the brother David changed these people to mighty men. He was able to raise them and train them to become mighty men. And the Bible described them, the mighty men of David. He didn't get ready made. There were people who were coming with extra baggage. There were people who were coming with issues. There were people who were coming with problems. But David was able to raise these people to become mighty men. You can get in the second Samuel chapter 22, 23 down. But time will not permit us. Second Samuel 23 down. 23, the verse 8 down. You can get it there. Let's move on. Jesus in his earthly ministry also came to the scene. Then in the book of Mark chapter 1, the verse 17. Jesus met, met some raw fishermen. I said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Is he the savior of the world? If you are the savior of the world, and you want to change this world, which category of people will you pick? I will enter the university campus and look for the professors. When I enter into the business sector, I'll look for those who are rich. But Jesus picked some guys who don't even know their left and right. 
and made them disciples and finally graduated them to an apostle. How did he train them? You know, these raw materials became well changes. As chapter 4, the verse 13 to 17. As for, I look at these people Jesus speak. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. You know, Peter was a coward. But now the people saw the boldness of Peter and John. And perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men. They marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Paul said, you stop there, stop there, stop there. They saw Peter and his brothers. They saw their boldness. The way they were going about things. This was after the healing of the cripple at the beautiful gate. They didn't understand. So they were trying to question them. How did you go about this? When they saw their boldness and noticed that this guy were uneducated and this guy were untrained uneducated, untrained. But they noticed something about them. They marvel, but they noticed that these guys, they had been with what? Jesus. Only Jesus and Antioch. They saw their boldness. They saw that the guys were uneducated. They were untrained. But what was unique about Peter and John was their association with Jesus Christ. So they don't know what to do with them. Just look at the verse 17. Time will not permit the verse 17. So all said, we are going to warn you guys again. But so that it spread no further among the people. Let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in this, in this name. He said, this guy, if you are not very careful, they will change the world. So the warning we are giving to them now, now don't go and teach anybody in the name of Jesus Christ. Because the name of Jesus is bringing a change. You can go. We are not worried about the miracle. You can go. But when you go, don't teach anybody about Jesus again. What are we trying to look at this morning? Association with Christ should be able to bring a change into your life. O be only Christ and not to be an a yende in sacra be eben abrabom. The change we are talking about should not just be being born again. Salvation is more than being born again. Salvation is more than being born again. Hallelujah. So Peter and his brother were changing the world with the gospel of Christ. That the leaders said, no, we don't want you to go again and teach or speak in the name of this man. You can go, but don't, because when you teach in his name and the heart of the people are attached, there will be a transformation. ICGC, all our branches didn't start with the refined people. But our mandate is to deal with the problem of Africa. I will show you the problem of Africa. Number one, the problem of Africa. The inferiority complex in us that tells you that you can't do it. I will end to me here. So anything that is unique, I have brought no more here. So when our fathers even saw a, 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 a white colored skin, they said, oh, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? So anything that looks extraordinary, we deify it. So a big tree is a god. A big mountain is a god. A big river should be worshipped. A big snake has to be worshipped. A big fish in the river. No, 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 no. So even the whale in the sea has to be worshipped. Because anything that looks extraordinary, we deify it as God. Because of the inferiority complex in our heart. Anything 
Anything that looked a little strange, that did not conform to the normal, is a God. We celebrate pitiness. We celebrate minor, minor things. And we dwell in the minor. And we make you understand that you are not capable. End to me yet. How would they end to me yet? So you have to wait for your uncle to travel overseas. Oba, no matter sure that there will be no So we are taught to live on the crumbs. We have been trained that somebody should be responsible for your problem. Because we don't make you to, to see yourself as someone who is capable. Somebody should be the answer to your problem. It is somebody's duty to solve your problem. So we carry that concept even to church. While the disciples of Jesus said, teach us how to pray. In our time, somebody must pray for us. The disciples never say, Jesus pray for us. Say, teach us how to pray like how John taught his disciples. Because we carry that African concept, that African mentality into the church. How would they end to me here? some rituals be. So we carry it's an African problem. We have been called not to reinforce this. We have been called not to reinforce this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I was giving you the history of this church, this church. I can say on authority the only help we got from Accra see, yes, i sorry you have one computer and one printer do, do, do you hear me? there is nothing like Accra ICGC it is you doing it we train you to understand that you are capable of solving your problem that is why we teach what we teach. Central gospel, your children would there. One casano, we to solve your problem. Your destiny is not in anybody's hand. It is not in the pastor's pocket. So we train you to understand that you have the solution. That is why we teach what we teach. Somebody say amen to that. You have the answer or the solution to your problem. So the spirit of ICGC, ICGC spirit, is you can make it yourself. You can do it. ICGC spirit is to deal with every form of inferiority. We focus on equipping you to solve your own problem. We focus on equipping you to deal with your problem. How do you even say this in front? I want this in song well. We, our focus is to help you to come to the position that you can solve your own problem. Brother well, Albert, help me. How do you say this? We focus. We, so that is why we teach what we are teaching. So we teach you the solution to your problem so that you apply it yourself. Not me doing it. Because if I am doing it for you, I become your God. That is why in ICGC, we don't build the church around the pastor. Please, are you with me? Are, are you with me? So I want to say, I want to say, I to Our structures are consciously put in place to improve every aspect of your life. Your spiritual life, your economic life, your social life. Our structures are put in place to help you deal with every aspect of your problem. 
If you look at our philosophy, human dignity, treating human beings like human beings. You don't treat human beings like dogs. There was a woman who came to church here looking for accommodation. I said, Pastor, but it doesn't look like central gospel building. I said, I said, I said, I said, we have a mindset that your washroom is equally important as your bedroom. That's why you don't build a house and be going to the toilet at the beach. Because washroom is a natural call. Ah, sorry, the washroom is even more important than your kitchen. You can cook outside, but for washroom. So these are the mindset that we are trying to, to teach that, no, you, you, you have to treat yourself like a human being. So that when you set out, there will be difference between you and the people that don't hear what we are teaching. So we talk about excellent practical Christianity and human dignity. And we are very passionate about this. Very, very passionate about this. Our passion has led to all sorts of transformation, a personal transformation and social transformation. And things we do, we believe it, they are the things that can help you to change. In ICGC, we believe that if you come to this church, you come to this church, if you come to this church crawling, our teaching should be able to help you to walk. If you come here walking, we should be able to teach you to be able to run. If you already come here running, we should be able to teach you to fly. No matter the level you are, our teaching should be able to help you to get to the next level. Say amen to that. That is why we do what we do. Jesus in his earthly ministry used four methods training the disciples. He did the thing for them to see. That's the demonstration. He did it first for them to see. Then number two, he did it with them. Number three, he allowed them to do it for supervision. Then number four, he left them on their own. Nehemiah P.A. was sorry, Han. Yeah, yeah, they a bit so that one person will be to me. That is why you don't go to women ministry. Let's go and pray in Bible. No, no, no. I tell my wife, don't go to women ministry with prayer. The prayer meeting should not be the focus of women ministry. Bible studies should not be the focus of women ministry. You go to some women ministry meetings, the Sunday preaching is what they are going to digest. We do this at the covenant family meeting. When women meet, let them think about what is destroying their marriage, what is killing them, what is making them to be at where they are so that they can be elevated from where they are. When the youth meet, let them do deal with issues that concern the youth that they can move from the level of the youth to a better level at the children's service. So all these structures are put in place to help you. Because we believe everybody has a potential. I believe strongly. Hallelujah. In the central gospel, our focus is not to come to church and be giving you money. We train you to make the money yourself. Should I repeat again? But I know central gospel where they buy no. You are married, 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 you are married. That is why we preach what we do. That is why we motivate you. That is why we encourage you. That is why we sometimes fire some of you. Sometimes we, we actually ignite and provoke some of you to run faster than before. Is somebody in church? They say, well, sorry, ha. Tieni ye. Botayena ede ye ni elise. We will transform you. Ye bema won chere chere. Ay bema wako du pen pen swa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Even if it's the witches that are chasing you, we will teach you to pray yourself and chase them. The end can show the coffer and Kamamra. Now, so for only more quantity, now a coya. So they be under so for me, she didn't attack. So for now, they didn't mean the. So for say me manu me treme wo benka wa no you should come to the point of maturity that you will be able to make an informed decision so the pastor should become a god so for let me pray me pio me she dey atare me she bula na green she nyina she nyina 
So you'll be responsible. You become an adult believer. You become an adult Christian. You know your left and right. You can make a mature decision and be responsible for the decisions you make. That is what we stand for. And if for 33 years, God has brought us this far, we have every reason of thanking God. Many lives have been transformed. Many lives have been changed. Many lives, many lives have been transformed through this teaching. And if this teaching has been able to change lives, then your lives can also be changed. So the moon chire chire no et mi mankrofo pi eba do pempen swa omwe dwa mi jidi pa se awusu se usu mwa eba mwa otu mi do bebiya obiya edu. That is why we want you to avail yourself for things we put in place. Whatever we put in place, we think about you. We don't do things because others are doing it. No, 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 no. Whatever we put in place, we think about you. Amen? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of my children are in Sunday school? None of them. But I must make sure that Sunday school runs away because your children are there. And we don't just want the children to grow boom without knowing their foundation. That's why we give attention to even the Sunday school. We give it attention. Hallelujah.